This is without doubt the most XC bike I have ridden in the modern era. My name's Guy Kestevin. I've been professionally testing mountain bikes for over 27 years. And today, I'm in Lake Garda for the official launch of Pinarello's Dogma XC. That's funny, because last time... Okay, Garda. I was actually riding on. <laughs> uh, Thomas Frisch next. Scott G Zero XC bike with original SIDs and V-brakes on. And I remember thinking, oh well, it won't be this sketchy. But you know what? This is pretty much the modern equivalent. This is full on XC racing. At its uh, finest and most frightening. And I mean pure race bike in the truest sense. Because this bike has been completely developed by the Ineos athletes. So purely by Tom and Pauline. They've had no input on this bike from the design team. It's the whole project has a start to finish three monthly Pinarello. So everything about the stiffness, the way the bike rides, the geometry is properly pro spec. And interesting talking to Kurt, who's Tom's coach for Ineos. You know, that bike has got to be kind of mirrored as closely as possible to his race and cyclocross bikes. So you're getting a very long, very steep geometry. So you've got a 68 degree head angle, but kind of compounding that is the fact you've also got 480 mil reach on this large and then an 80 mil stem. So this thing feels hyper stretched. Perhaps unsurprisingly, both Tom and Pauline came back with the same priorities in terms of primary performance. That's low weight and high stiffness. So you've got a bike that weighs 10.47 kilos in a small, which is the size that they both ride, and comes with this unique triangulated bottom bracket, as well as a whole other bunch of stiffness boosting measures, including asymmetric chainstays. And interestingly, the chainstays are actually totally separate pieces, left to right. And they're joined with a hearth junction in the center on an oversized axle. And as you can see, not only is this Pinarello top bit a minus 18 degree, 80 mil stem, it's also got this really pronounced wing profile to it. So that makes it seriously stiff. I mean, it's right up there. Definitely with the bars from Roval and Canyon. In terms of... I don't say zero compliance. I mean, my hands haven't gone numb yet. But it's definitely no flexy Bergtech ride wide piece. And essentially, in terms of ride position, you just got to ride it like a gravel bike, really. <laughs> Apart from the 76 mil far away, it's pretty much the same hand to seat position as my Stig. And it's only one degree off in terms of head tube angle as well. And the other interesting dimensions in terms of outliers are you've got a pretty low bottom bracket height for that triangulated BB. 323 to 46 mil drop and then the back end super short 425 mil for really fast reactions on tight courses and what's interesting is they've actually gone with a net very neutral anti-squat figure it's around 100 percent but 
had so much stiffness. But even with the suspension open, it still feels super tight and efficient. And you'd have to really push to get more than 60, 70% into the travel on descents so far. So if I get the chance, I'm gonna drop the shock out and see if it's actually stitching that's making it feel so stiff. But also, it runs a very low leverage rate, about two to one. So again, there's not really much force activating that shock in the start of its stroke. So, a really, really stiff frame. It feels super stiff through the suspension as well. Certainly an exercise in saddle and uh, grip quality in terms of comfort. But then again, Pinarello are totally unapologetic about this. You know, they said, it's a pure race bike. They're not trying to sell it commercially. Well, I mean, they are now, but they're not expecting it to be a big seller. So there's none of the compliance or other sort of trail style features that's designed to, you know, soften it for a, an average rider or even a trail rider. Because you can move that front shock mount to get 100 mil of travel out the rear. 90 mil as it comes with 100 mil fork. Go! And that's with a 190 shock with a 45 mil stroke. But you can stick a 210 with a 50 mil in by moving the uh, front mount on the shock to open up more travel on the back. And then when you hit the concrete slab sections, on goes the lockout and it's front and rear. So it's on the SL shock at the back and on this 32 step cast at the front. Just the new fork, so we'll have to have a detailed look at that later. That's enough talking for now though. Things are thinning out and steepening up. <laughs> yeah, <boy. laughs> go, 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 go! And to be fair, all that tightness and steep angles does make it feel nice and agile on the slow speed stuff. But one thing you've got to watch out for is there's a 60 degree lock <laughs> on the handlebar, which is pretty restrictive. I do not want to be doing switchbacks on this because it means that those low bars aren't going to take out the top tube in a crash. And other race specific stuff, it's got a flat mount brake on the rear, so you'll max out at a 160 rotor. <laughs> That's it, first time on this new super light Fox SC32 it feels pretty good and I'm saying it's 40% stiffer with that rearward brace on it it definitely feels pretty accurate and the other fun you know you're on a genuine race bike fact is that it's got clearance for up to a 40 tooth chain ring which Tom Pidcock uses regularly apparently. Pauline is no stranger to mashing the big gear either. You know that's the same size chain ring I use on my gravel bike and they're using it for XC 
And I'll explain to you, you know, this bike is such a priority machine for sprint and attack style trails. And not so much a rocky. Whee! Woohoo! Still not got full travel. And I'm properly pushing what I'm comfortable with on this bike now. Let's see if I can get full travel out this. Whoa! <laughs> The tire's okay. So this is the kind of situation where this bar and stem with that big negative really come into their own. And you've got that 1300 gram Fox 32 SC with that crazy new brace on the back. And then you've got that unique triangulated bottom bracket. And the good news is it's threaded as well, so it's a standard fit. And then you've got that really neat linkage setup. And I've tucked inside itself for the rear shock. And then that front mount there is the bit that can be moved forwards to put the longer stroke shock in. Because you've got that 100% anti-squat traction is still pretty good I mean it's got a fairly steep 75 degree seat angle anyway but because of that long reach I've nudged the saddle forwards to put me more on point for climbs but to be honest this is where that 60 mil stern and the negative rise are really coming in that front end is just a lot on target. And that's why racers run that setup. Yes, it feels like I'm riding a time trial bike on descents compared to what I'm used to. But on the climbs, you know, the position absolutely nailed on. And obviously, you know, now you don't have to watch a lot of XC to know at the climbs where the victories are made especially for really light high power to weight athletes <laughs> like Pauline and Tom and they're saying Tom Peacock weighs like 56 57 kilos when he's race fit. So that is like, that's a lot lighter than I am. And I'm only running 130 PSI to get about 25% sag at this bike. They're not releasing it with pig cocks. Some tail suspension on yet, he's still riding that, but it's not commercially available. I think you can get it custom made for you for like 4K <laughs> if you want to go that route. So I'm going to do a little tech check on the bike as well, so you can see the details of the spec and the design, because it's beautifully put together, as you'd expect from a Pirinarello. And it comes in two versions. This Dogma XC with Torre 40 carbon fiber. And then just the straight XC bike with a lower grade Torre fiber. This is a 900, which weighs a bit more. Comes with the GX axis spec. This is full. XXSL and like I say all the latest Fox SL suspension so you've got that new Fox 32 step cast fork 
with that crazy organic brace on there. You've got this most Talon Ultra XC bar. It's on a hammerhead shark shape with all the cables going underneath. And there are a lot of cables. There's like five just on that side with the, with the brakes, dropper post, and then that box twin lock. So that is a very, very busy end of the bar. You've got aero spacers on top of the stem with a GPS mount, but the stem is fastened with two little grub screws in the back there. And I did manage to shift it on a rocky descent, so I had to tighten that up. Uh, it's fully internal cable routing. You've got five different bottle cage positions, so you can fit two bottles nose to tail on that down tube. And you've got that big triangular cutout. You've got a 3D printed chain guide there. You've got that big main pivot with that hook joint in. Huge chain stays on this. And then those skinny seat stays. Actually, do you know what? They're not that skinny. They're pretty big at the top because there's no brace. Because these are two separate sides joined through that section there. They're actually pretty chunky seat stays. And then you've got that really neat kind of interlocking linkage there. And that's about as much travel as I've managed to get out of it most of the day. That's the Battery Float SL Fox Shock on the rear. Again, lock out there. Then you've got that CNC machined front shock mount, and that allows you to put the longer stroke shock in there to get 100, 100 mil of travel out of this bike. And then you've got that factory transfer SL drop post there with of course it's got a carbon rail saddle what else do you expect oh haven't even talked about the tires you've got Max's recon race 2.35 front exo protection which is uh, you know I'm glad of it to be honest I properly dinged the rock uh, obviously didn't get full travel but I did properly ding the rock and the both tires were fine You've got XTR brakes, 180 front, post mount at the front, and XXSL chains there. Interesting, not a power meter. Seeing more and more power meters on top spec bikes now. You don't get that on this. XXSL rear mech, and the carbon cage on there. And then it's a 2.25 rear tire, but there's room for a 2.4 in that back end if you need the extra rubber. And I have to say, it's properly striking. I think that kind of crazy, you know, world championship and Olympic gold medal livery kind of suits it. There's a red and black one as well. But if you're going to go for it, you know, go full golden glory, I say. So there we go. Certainly been a full on day here in Garda. Hammering the climbs on the gravel, on the road. Done quite a lot of road climbing. Uh, it's Italian XC uh, today and then uh, pitching into a variety of kind of mellow gravelly single track and then some pretty extreme steppy rocky descents and yeah I mean I probably had about three hours riding on it so it's very much first impressions but they're pretty strong impressions it's very very mechanically stiff uh, that bottom bracket seems to definitely work out there's not much flex in this bike at all uh, when you stamp on the power it feels very very efficient uh, that two to one shock ratio means i'm running about 120 psi at 70 kilos weight those guys could be running even less that's going to bring up you know it's going to kind of take the shock out of its operating range really uh, and make it a very stiff uh, quite insensitive off the top. I've noticed the heavier guys uh, who I'm riding with have a lot more bounce, a lot more fluidity. But, you know, this is a pure race machine. That That's the overwhelming thing. I mean, I could go on about the details here, but the overwhelming thing is this is an absolutely pure race team. I mean, Pinarello, being totally honest, they've barely ridden this bike. It's all been Pauline and Tom uh, doing the development on this. And this is the bike they've asked for. You know, seriously stiff with this geometry that almost mimics their road bike positions. Uh, I mean, that's what it feels like to me on this end. It's about as sketchy as that. I mean, to be fair, the angles aren't really an issue. Uh, it's, it's more the handling position that's so extreme. I definitely go for a medium if I had the choice again, because that 480mm wrench combined with that long stem 
and the negative rise. That that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with on steep descents, you know. And again, I guess it's the reason I haven't used much travel on the rear is because nearly all the weight is over the front. But then when you're climbing, this thing is a proper rocket ship, super light, super stiff. And even though the shock's not that supple, because you've got that 100% uh, anti-squat, it is actually, once you're settled into the sag, it is actually pretty fluid. I'm not getting kicked around or spat about. Uh, under power, it actually hooks up pretty well, and there's been some proper loose technical climbs here. So yeah, I mean, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, but I'm not going to say it's a bike. You know, I've enjoyed you know riding in a trail sense. If I was going to race it, would I race this? I don't know. I don't think I would. I, I you know, I I want to feel more confident on the descents, but then I haven't got the skills that these guys have got, and I'm not used to riding bikes this shape like they are so uh, yeah maybe not the bike for me but you know if you want to be like tom and pauline then and have a proper unapologetically super efficient and geometrically extreme race bike you know even things like you know that 40 tooth main chain that 40 tooth chainring capability and in fact, it's only 90 mil of travel at the back. This is a proper, I mean, it's, it is, it's an old school Heg C bike. You know, it is not the latest generation. It's not your 120 mil bikes. It's not your Yeti or your Scott or your Cervelo or your Specialized. It's, it's previous generation in a lot of the approaches, but then that's what these guys want. And that's what Pinarello have delivered. And you absolutely cannot argue with its race record so far. I mean, this thing is as racetrack proven in terms of world championship wins as you could possibly want. And obviously, a lot of that's down to the athletes, but, you know, they're riding the bike they want to ride, and that has to be a significant factor in those victories. So, massive thanks to Pinarello for flying me out here to uh, Garda for a day. Uh, huge thanks to my regular channel sponsors who are listed at the end. If you could support those guys because they're supporting me with your, when you're shopping, that would be fantastic. Massive thanks to my Patreon subscribers who pledge on a monthly basis and they get early, extended and behind the scenes edits as a thank you. And uh, they also get all those edits ad free. But if you've enjoyed this, uh, click, give it the like, tell your mates about the channel, uh, give this a note, you know, click for notifications, click for subscriptions so you can see the next videos that come up. There's plenty more in the pipeline. Uh, probably nothing as extreme as this, uh, but uh, a lot more on the trail, gravel and XC side of things. But for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV, going hyper fast on the climbs. I'm feeling kind of terrified on the descents. On the finally available to the public, Pinarello, Dogma, XC.